guys will notice what's in here. Some cows. It's about 30 seconds and I could see what was happening. Those cows fit right in here. There you go. <sighs> Rookie mistake. Um, well, the calves came through. That was uh, what I wanted to see, but uh, it didn't take long because as soon as I pulled out, um, I watched Quapaw come through. Her, right there. She uh, just walked right through it like, like a calf did. So they are after some of this green grass here in this lane, um, which is all hunky-dory, but I didn't want a cow to come through. And this is what I didn't want to happen was it be too big. Um, so I guess we should have stuck with the 15 or 18 inch rule and um, Anyways, it's a uh, it's my mistake young farmers mistake on trying to uh, be innovative and come up with something uh, To catch these calves. So we're gonna have to delay this a little bit um, And I, I had a slight feeling because this is the first time we've done this before that this would work and uh, the reason is, is I was a little hesitant and thought it may be a little bit too wide. Now, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and shut this gate, swing it back, tie it back up where it, it, it was. I'll go ahead and get the feed bunk ready uh, to be used, but unfortunately it's too big. So my, eye, my thought was like, if it's too big, we're gonna have to shrink it down. And you can kind of see the height of those calves, but my idea is to because, I mean, we could come back in here and put some more tubing, um, which could be a little bit more expensive by adding another bar and making this a little bit more narrow. But my thought was to, well, come on in, buddy. My thought was to shrink this down and those calves can just basically go underneath it and it'll keep the cows from getting in there. And when they try to go through, and have to get underneath it, they may not like it very much. But I gotta shut that gate because I don't want them in here right now. I don't want those cows thinking they can go in there. And they've already defeated me today. Once, he's like, I'll go in there. There's grass in there, I'll stick my head in there. All right, mama cows, you won today. Quapaws won today. We'll uh, move on and try again. What do you think, dude? <laughs> See, actually, that's pretty narrow over there because of the orange gate. He's about to go all the way through there. And there he goes. So he's in, or she's in, a little female. These want to go too, but... I'm gonna go ahead and send him back through because I don't want him in here. Go through there, babe. I don't want you away from mama. Plenty of room right there for a calf. So, here we go. I'm gonna shut it up for now. Ah, frustrating. It is kind of defeating, and some of you are probably saying, Dusty, I would have, I told you so. I could have told you that, but you now it's part of learning and doing this. This is the first time we've put this together. It's a, it's a makeshift, you know, freestanding creep gate, and uh, we'll just have to make some adjustments to it. It wasn't very expensive to make. I had a little bit of leftover uh, two-inch square tubing, and um, I went and bought, only had to buy a three joints, three 20 foot joints of the red iron um, two inch square tubing. So really not that expensive. And then I um, had a couple of pieces of um, some four inch tubing left over. So 
whatever. We'll try, we'll try putting a bar across it and see if that works. At least to try to keep those mamas out of it. We may have to two, put two bars. And the only reason I say two is because I'm a little nervous that a mama may get their head stuck in there. That's my only thing. And this is only going to be set up hopefully for a week or two. That's the idea because I don't want to deal with the chances of these mamas getting stuck. Uh, but anyways, a little defeating, but we'll, uh, we'll get it right. Let's, uh, let's go feed the Dunbar herd since we're here. I brought them some cubes anyways. We'll get them taken care of them, keep them happy. And uh, we'll see you guys out in the Dunbar pasture. There he comes. Look at him rumbling, stumbling. Come on, Dunbar. We won't do cubes without you. Pretty fella. Oh, Eleanor. We got your cubes too, girl. Our own cubes to our princess. Thank you, Brenda. I know a lot of you have missed Eleanor. She's doing good. She's doing all right. Got her own little special place down here. So what I like to do is, I know Kevin does this, but <laughs> there's her calf. There's our Nora. Try to keep the others occupied. Poor cubes here along the way. And see even these calves want some of them too. Keep them away from Eleanor. That way everybody's over there away from her. It looks like Eleanor's drawing the crowd of babies and I hit it behind that tire so Maybe some of them wouldn't catch her. Yeah, it's time to catch these calves. These mamas have had these babies on them for seven or eight months now. There's some small pellets in there. You guys take a look at this, by the way. Look at all this green. Lots of green grass. Luckily, with the rain that we have, you can see a, a lot of patches of good green grass. And uh, here's some previous clippings you can see where they're grazing right in here one point we got some regrowth and height to this this grass I'm not sure what it is I don't know my winter grasses very well but this pasture looks good looks healthy but you got to have some rain to help you along the way you got to have a little luck to get there and luckily we've had it see like this patty here it's a dark green grass very healthy growing right here compared to what they previously were grazing and then here again, you've got poop in there. You've got poop in there. <laughs> An old poop patty there. The diff you can see the height of the grass is different. And maybe that's not what they want, but you can tell they've been grazing it. You can see the, the clippings of grass there around some of this poop. <laughs> Oh yeah, looks good. Next time we come back, we're gonna work on that creep gate, calf catcher gate, and we're gonna try to get it right. We can kind of take a lot of that height out of the way of that creep feeder, of that creep gate, 
and reduce them from wanting to go through it. And if they stick their head in there and try to go through, their back will not fit. Um, so we're gonna put those bars across there and hopefully that will um, minimize that space a little bit. And we built it a little bigger and we knew that there was a chance of it being a little bit bigger, but uh, it was better that we start out big to go smaller. If it's too small, you can't make it bigger. And that was what we were trying to avoid on that. So the fact that it is bigger, we can still make adjustments to get it right, so. Dunbar, what are you doing, boy? I'm gonna come visit you. up here. Morning, Eleanor. All right, guys. Hey, we're back at the Lynch residence with the Dunbar herd. Here they are. Here they are. Last time we were out here and uh, we made our creep calf catcher a little bit too wide and the cows came through, as you saw. Um, I was a little disappointed um, in myself and my thoughts and my measurements and whatever. It's okay. We learn and uh, it's the first time doing this, so we're going to come back and we're going to get it right this time. So, I've got some scrap metal right here is what I've got. It looks like an inch tubing. And then what we're going to do is when we use these clips. I'm going to show you these clips that we use on our continuous fence panels. And uh, we came up with the idea and we found some of this um, tubing, this round tubing pipe. And we're going to put it on here and we think it may be easier for them to roll underneath it. The calves that is, not the cows. And it'll keep the cows from coming in. So, got the welder here. I'm going to get to work on it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shrink this gap down vertically and we're going to put a bar across here and make the calves go underneath it and uh, just like I said make this a lot smaller and try to reduce the chance of the cows coming through here. Hopefully it makes a big difference and uh, where the cows actually won't come through here and uh, we're going to start opening this gate and see if we can catch some calves. Are you here to inspect? Hey, you gonna weld it for me or what?
Go ahead and inspect it. I know you are. All right, so what we did, well, what I did was I used these, um, I call them clips. I used them on our continuous fence panels is what we did. Ideally, so this is what happens when you use scrap metal. Uh, I thought this would be just long enough where we basically, the idea would be to have this a little longer, but that just is how it goes when you use scrap metal. This would be a little bit longer and you pin it. You could put a pin in it, you drill a hole in this pipe, and you could honestly just do an old farmer's pin. Here, this one still had the uh, coupling on it, the metal coupling, and so it actually fits snug to this uh, certain size of clip. This is a one and inch quarter clip, and so it fits snug there, there's no movement. And then I went ahead and put one, well, I don't have a direct center. This is basically the direct center, so um, I couldn't, I could put another one there just to make it look better, but I went ahead and and I put one in the middle just to keep it, um, just to kind of hold it up here in the middle is why I put that there. Uh, probably, um, probably should come back and add some more here, uh, but maybe right here and there, um, add some just to strengthen this because uh, Dunbar uh, strengthening um, or in case these cows want to come through, but I, I don't think that they're going to try to come through that. So. We'll see, uh, we'll see how this works. And then what you would do uh, is if this was extended out and you didn't have a metal coupling on it, we would basically pin it here so that if it doesn't work or you don't like it, you can take it out, which is what these clips are handy for is to brace it up against it. And um, so ideally you could pin it and take it out if you needed to. Maya, you don't want to hang out with Dunbar? I went ahead and added one. Make me feel better dealing with Dunbar. Got that done. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out the pasture. I'm going to come back around basically to our headquarters up here. Um, to the corral, to the main corral, and I'm going to uh, get some feed and see if I can get them to come up. They're grazing green grass right now. I'm going to see if I can get them up with some feed to see if this works. Eleanor! Hey, girl. Oh, you got to pee. Nice, Eleanor. That's awesome. Well, I managed to find some feed, so I'll pour some feed out for them here. Not for y'all. See if I can get them up. I'm sure Dunbar will be the first. Got a cow's attention. Let's see if we can get them to come up. Of course, there you are. All right, so this will be our test run. I've got some feed. I managed to find some feed, and. Uh, 
first one, of course, I knew it would be up here. It's Mr. Dunbar. He's hanging out watching me, but hopefully the rest of them just shaking the bucket a little bit. Uh, the rest of them will come up here. And a uh, moment of truth <laughs> to see if, uh, see if it just is the calves this time and not the cows that come through and uh, see how everybody reacts. So everything's ready to go. So here's Quapaw. Quapaw was uh, the uh, last time was the first one to go through. She was uh, my test dummy, although she's not uh, dumb at all. She's actually quite one of the most intelligent bison we have. But uh, just an example of females like Quapaw here, who's usually pretty thick and heavy and fleshy. Uh, what happens when these calves get bigger and get older, and if you haven't weaned them, you know, over winter, these cows can struggle a little bit, losing weight, because not only are they feeding themselves, they're, they're feeding over a 300 pound calf, um, sometimes over a 400 pound calf, essentially. So um, it's important to get them off so that these mamas can recover um, and get ready for breeding season and they can gain weight. And if they gain weight, they're healthier and it'll give them a better chance to breed. And I know we do that so we can uh, get these mamas back in shape and, and get them back to looking fleshy and healthy again healthier they're healthy animals uh, just a healthier uh, state well, they're all out here stop to take a little break I'm all I guess we can back up and see if Quapaw comes through Well, of course, uh, that's how it goes whenever you uh, actually have it ready to go and none of them come through. Last time I was here and did this, they did not hesitate to try to come through there. But now that I'm here filming, waiting to actually catch them coming in, they don't come in. That's how it goes, right? So I'm going to hang out and uh, see if they'll come through. But right now, I guess they're in relax mode, chill mode. But what I want to do is, though, is I want to be able that when they come through there, I want to run them in and out. I think it's a good idea. Some some followers, uh, some actually people that raise bison, reached out to me, and this is what they told me how they um, how they catch their calves with the same sort of setup that I have. And I thought it was a great idea. Is to when you open that gate, it's like oh come in. You can come eat for a little while and then run them back out, so that whenever you want to catch them you open up a gate, you open up that gate like normal, like you would every day, and when they come in, that's when you catch them. So you start a routine with them. If you can, if you're able to do that, you know, at a small place like this, we're able to do that. You can start a routine with these guys and see that one, he's actually sticking his head through there. Um, so that when they start coming in here, you don't just leave it open for them. And that was my mentality at first was, let's just leave it open so they can come in and out. They can get some feed and they can go back out. Well, if you show up and they aren't in here, it's gonna be hard to get them up because they know they can come in and out when you're not here. So if you can teach them where they, you open the gate, they come in and then we catch them that way, well, we should have more success. So I appreciate, um, you know, people's, uh, input on that uh, that follow me along so hey thank you guys for watching this day hope you guys have joined another video we will catch them someday and uh, we will let you know how it goes thank you guys for watching we'll see you soon What are you doing, boy?